Beats, Brews, and Points of View is a product of Dream Over Reality Media and brought to you by Arctic Circle Brewing Company. And we are back, baby. Um, part two of this episode. Um, we wanted to have a good amount of time here to speak on the new music because we were off last week and we have a ton of music to cover. Um, we got a little, we got something old uh, in the last episode that we just finished up on. Both uh, E-Man and I had some pretty decent ones to unpack there with Sade and, you know, the continuation of punk rock music. But now um, we got some awesome, I mean, there has been, over the last few weeks, I feel like it's been some of the best music releases in a fucking minute. And I'm very excited to talk about them because now we are about to get into some serious talk here. we've all been waiting for. (laughs) So we um, have been anticipating this album for five years. Um, last week, just before the album came out, he gave us a one-off with the Heart Part 5. Which, you know, has been doing before he releases an album for the past, like, yep. five albums. Yep. Like, yep. every album. Yeah, pretty much every album. And this one was special, man. This one you almost had to watch the video with, um, for it to, well, at least the first go-around, because Kendrick is rapping from six different people's perspectives, himself, Will Smith, uh, Kobe OJ. Bryant, OJ, Jussie Smollett, and Nipsey. Uh, Nipsey. Um, and it is just... And Kanye. And Kanye, and Kanye West, yes. Yeah. Good call. Um, but his, man, the the ability that he showed off in that got everyone ultra excited for the album because it was really showing off, man. It was like, I don't, I don't know. I've let y'all eat for the last five years, but now I'm back, and it's my turn again. <laughs> um, and that would be Kendrick Lamar. You know, he's just to me, he's leaps and bounds the best rapper in the game right now. Like it's to me, it's not even close. Like it's not even fair, dog. It's not even fair. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I had posted after like my first listen, I put po- or of the heart part five that is. I posted on my Instagram story. I wonder if Drake and J Cole are somewhere giving each other supportive hugs right now. Because, man, it is just like his he makes music that you want to just rewind a million times, like right off the rip. Like I probably listened to Heart Part Five 12 times between that and um, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers releasing, which is the double the name of the double album that Kendrick just put out. Um, I have a lot of things to say about it. Um and we're going to continue to talk about it more in the coming weeks because, you know, like he's one of those type of artists that you pick up on. There's so many Easter eggs in his music um, and there's so many little things you pick up on each listen. On my first three listens, I still don't know how to rank this among Kendrick catalog. Mm-hmm. Um, Too cause, early. Because the, the only thing I know is it's better than overly, de- overly dedicated. That's the only thing I know. Right <laughs> yeah, now. For, sure, <laughs> for sure. As far as that. Uh <laughs> On my first listen, man, I mean, are we just going to get into it? Do you want to talk about, like, first of all, I want to say, because we missed this album on, my, on something old, something new, but Tana Leone, uh, who's also on PG Lang, which, by the way, stands for Program Language, by the way, I just found That's out. That's what that is. Uh, I was wondering. I actually just, I just get a little bit of reconnaissance and looked that up myself. Uh, Tana Leone, uh, who dropped an album actually last week, too, while we were off, uh, he was on Kendrick Lamar's PG Lang. Who was also on this album. He was also on this album. I really enjoy him a lot, man. Uh, his album was pretty great by itself. I'm not going to, I mean, we'll say that for, I'm going to say that for. Yeah, because I want to listen to it. I haven't, like uh, I got to listen to it. Uh, it is definitely great. Like, you gonna, you're you going to enjoy it. I have a feeling. He's got like this kind of like weird, like bouncy sound. Kind of like Kendrick where it kind of goes all over the spectrum. But mm-hmm. anyway, uh, as far as what I think about this, like, I think on my first listen, I do like the Mr. Morale side more than I like the Big Stepper side, personally. Mm-hmm. I do feel like the fact that... By the way, shout out to Kodak Black <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I mean, not really. No, I mean, not, <laughs> like, like for, the, for this particular album. His verse shout, is yeah. great on this. Yes, his, that was probably some of the best rapping I've heard from him. I do like I do like his little interludes and stuff like that he did, too. It's, it's uh, it just one, wasn't 100% expe- my favorite verse. It wasn't expected. Yeah. That's why I say shout out Kodak Black. I was not expecting what I heard from him on this album. Yep. Uh, got Zola. On, you got Zola, on, yeah, on we cry together, dude. Honestly, so how that? Ah, man. All right, so that particular song, right? Little, little, little triggering. Not gonna lie, uh, but it's just one of the things. Like hearing it, it's just one of those. It, it sounds like it's almost a part of like a play or like mm-hmm. a skit or something like that. It just, it just sounds so like theatrical. I think my favorite track on here, I don't 
three listens is probably still father time. Mm-hmm. It's talking about like, you know, men with like grown men with like dad issues and everything like that. Like that's great. Worldwide Steppers is great. Uh Auntie Diaries when he's coming over his like take on like homophobia and things like that and like, you know, dealing with like his uh, trans aunt and uh cousin. His cousin. Yeah. Uh it's Dude, it's it's just a lot to process in this album. Even on three listens, I still, yeah, it's Easter eggs all over the place, man. Uh, is it? Did it live up to the hype five years later? Fuck yeah, for me it did a hundred percent. Okay, um, I, I'm gonna break it down like this, y'all. I'll, I'll hear my thoughts on it a little bit, and then we can kind of go pick it apart, um, you know, song by song. Um, this album for me, it was so good that I started taking fucking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole notes section on the breakdown of Kendrick's new album. And this is kind of what I wrote down. Um, I think acceptance is a big theme in this album. Um, I like the way that he used the tap dancing sounds, um, kind of like he used the Lucy skit in To Pimp a Butterfly. How um, first you got the full, like it would be the tap dancing, and followed by the person saying, quit tap dancing around the conversation. And then each time you heard it after that, it was just the tap dancing. It would be smaller and smaller. And he did that on Tim Pimp a Butterfly with um, the skit where he talks about the evils of Lucy all surrounding him and being stuck in a hotel room screaming. You um, love you was complicated. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, I thought that was a fun Easter egg. That was like a little bit of a calling back that he did. Um, I think Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, um, the, the title is a reflection of self and also how the masses move, how we all act like we're perfect, Mr. Morale, um, and pass judgment on others while projecting our own securities, insecurities and demons. Um, and I said that we're all big stepping around our own problems, hence the tap dancing throughout the whole album. Um, I also think that's why he chose controversial features like Summer Walker and Kodak Black, because they both had very public... Um, uh, indiscretions and um, relationships. Summer that... Walker's like uh, career has always been intact, though. Yeah, yeah it's always been an attack, so. and her relationship with London on the track has always been very much in the limelight and made for everyone to see. And you know, we all love her as an artist, but there's there's definitely toxicity behind both her and Kodak Black. And I think that's the reason that Kendrick chose them on this album because that's you know acceptance. And, you know, um, the way that we uh, villainize everyone um, is a big theme throughout the album. Um, is Beth Gibbons from Portishead? Yes. Okay, yep. that's what I thought. All right. Yeah. And then um, another big theme that I got that off the album uh, that I wrote down would be toxic masculinity. Uh, the first time you hear it is in Father Time, um, how he expresses how we're all, especially black men, um, raised to be... Like tough, tough. Yeah, you're not. You're supposed you're to like supposed just brush to, that shit off. Yeah, like. and suppress your sensitive side, and you know, it, and you're not supposed to show weakness or. And he's describing how he was raised and how a lot of um, people around him were raised, and I think that's um, an important thing that he did there because um, you don't hear that a lot from our major artists. Um, and then you hear it again on Anti Diaries, like you just mentioned with um, the acceptance of his trans family members. And some people were mad about the fact that he used the F word. Um, and th- I'm talking about the gay slur like F the word. Con- yeah, I'm going to say the... I'm gonna say the context of it made it. Yeah, it makes sense to me, yeah. especially when you break I'm, it down the, the like verse by verse. Because at first he's talking about being in elementary school and not knowing any better, and he uses it there. And then he talks about being in middle school and not still not knowing any better, and uses it there. And then by the third verse, he actually starts saying f word instead of actually using. What it. I do like too is he finally acknowledge the white girl on stage from Mad City that, too. that happened like a while yep, ago. Yep, and he used yeah. that as like his yeah. frame of reference I there. Do, I did really enjoy that that got called back too. Yeah, I yeah. agree with you. I, I liked that part too. Um, but yeah, so you hear it in there um, and then you also learn about his past um, let me see, hold on. Also learning here. Oh yeah, and then the third big theme that I caught in here would be progression um, as people. Um because throughout the album, he's telling you he's, he's the m- most open he's ever been um, about himself personally and how we're all, you know, we all make mistakes and it's all about how you learn from and how you move on from that. And he addresses his, his progression um, in getting over homophobia um, on this album a lot, you know, and how 
in society and hip hop, it's really, it's been relevant for a long time and him kind of breaking down those walls and, um, and addressing it in a way that, you know, is going to be felt in hip hop. I feel like, because, you know, a lot of people don't, they tap dance around these conversations, you know, they don't, um, they don't bring it up because it's not considered to be cool or, you know, you know, what's, what's popular. So I really appreciate that he did that. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, I appreciated how open he was with his own vices. He, this is the first time he's ever mentioned his kids by name, his girl by name. Um, he talks about his addictions to sex and how he cheated on his girlfriend uh, multiple times and how that made her feel. And um, talking to a white chick saying my ancestors watching me fuck. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he really leaves it all on the table yeah. for you. And then lastly, breaking cycles is a big part. The, uh, That's a mother. I sober. Yeah. yeah. Mother. I sober um, unpacks generational curses um, in the most poignant way that I think I've ever heard on a hip hop song. That song made me fucking cry. Um, and it's in true Kendrick fashion, too. He This is like. It's so cool that it's at the end of the album, too, because it's this very somber. It almost reminds me of a Radiohead song, the way the piano chords come in. It kind of reminds me of the Daily Mail by um, Radiohead. Look that up if you haven't heard it before. Um, I almost thought it was a sample at first, but I looked it up, and it's not a sample. But I, 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 I teared up a little bit. Yeah, for I sure, man. I think by, like, seven, I, like, teared up. I, I can't wait for... The TikTok things that come out about this album, though. Oh yeah, for sure. they're gonna be. There's everywhere. already one about uh, what's the go that black track, Silent Hill. Yeah, push them niggas on me like hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mean like hmm. He's always <laughs> doing little weird phrases and shit, like phrasing and stuff. It's but man, morning. I love how um how Mother I um sober progresses with that short, small piano thing and him rapping at the most downplayed you've ever heard his vocal performance. Like he's very like somber and um you know almost whispering in a way. But then in true Kendrick fashion at the end, as the music ramps up, so does his vocal, and it kind of crescendos into, you know, that intense Kendrick that we've all seen him do on stage where, you know, he fucking dials in and then just snaps, and that's what he does at the end of it. And, man, whew, it is really emotional, and it's really um, well done. He served his purpose on it for sure. Um, but, yeah, that was my original thoughts. I kind of want to just take it um, – Track by track with United in Grief, it kind of starts off as we thought it would be, kind of. Um, that piano key is just. Doom, yep. Doom, doom, and and doom, doom. that shit was ill. Kind of like, giving us yeah. a state of affairs and his head over the last five years. And, you know, he talks about, I'm going through some shit. The last 185 days, I've been going through some shit. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then goes right into N95, which is a play into the masks, um, you know, that we've all been wearing throughout this thing. But that's not the only topic point in that song. Um, that song is also co-produced by Baby Keem, um, which Baby Keem is all over this fucking album, which E-Man just mentioned PG Lang before. Baby Keem is also a PG Lang artist of Kendrick's. Um, he's also Kendrick's cousin. I think cousin. that was recent, because I, I feel like he was an Aftermath, and then they like just picked that up. I don't think I mean, he, he could, was always with PG, PG Lang. PG Lang could be a, a subsidiary of Aftermath. I mean, it probably, uh, it more than like, it probably is. It could be. It, uh, I almost can guarantee, if we do the look research yeah. on it. In fact... Yeah, keep keep going. I'm going sure. to look that up, though. But, yeah, so N95, um, Baby Keem feature on it, Baby Keem production on it, as well as Boy Wanda. Um, and that's the lead – I think that's the lead single because he just dropped a video for it, um, which I haven't even seen yet, but I heard the visual is pretty powerful, so I'm ex excited to see that. Um, and then there's a couple tracks. And this album uh, – so Ebro made a great reference on uh, Ebro in the Morning. He said, this is not lean back music. This is not – uh, background music this is lean in music like you really got to be paying attention because it's so layered and so deep and having said that i also think this is his most marketable album as far as finding singles because i think you can get a single out of worldwide steppers i think you could get a single out of die hard which is the following track which i really love i'm not sure who this um the art it's spelled b-l-x-s-t like blacksis maybe or something but I loved that feature. I even think you could make Father Time a feature, a, um, a single, even though the subject matter is pretty intense. And then Rich Spirit, I think, also could be a fucking single. The first, I think a lot of the singles reside in the first half of the album. I even think um, Purple Hearts with Summer Walker and Ghostface Killer could be on the radio. I and think, I think Silent Hill is going to be the next single. 
Yeah, it could be. I think Silent Hill is the next he might, single person. I don't know because he might face too much back. Like a lot of people are pissed that he, he gives a fuck. <laughs> I, don't, he, I don't think. Yeah, Kendrick but as gives far as as far as yeah. marketing a single, you need the radio stations to play it. A lot of radio stations don't play Kodak Black. Yeah, they do. Are you He's got me? rape charges, bro. A lot of people don't fuck with his shit. Art, uh, do you want me going to R. Kelly right now? And like how well, R. How, Kelly's career is over. I mean, <laughs> it, how long did it take for that, Neil? <laughs> yeah, but I'm how just, long did it take for R. I'm Kelly to fucking? I'm just saying, Kodak Black is a convicted rapist, so. <laughs> Com- charges, not convicted. He's convicted. Is he convi- is he convicted? Yes. Yeah. Oh shit. He admitted to it on the stand and everything. Oh, what was that? I read about the whole thing. I read- Holy shit! I actually <laughs> did not see that. Yeah, he even apologized to the girl that he did it to in court. Um, last thing I heard from Kodak Black was like him fucking in like the ho- at the, some hockey game or some shit. Oh yeah, I remember that too. Yeah, he was caught on camera. He was like banging in the <laughs> skybox or something. He's definitely a troubled kid. He's definitely got a troubled youth. It's just crazy but- that like a lot of like the the people we view as like the top tier rappers like gravitate towards Kodak Black. Like mm-hmm. J Cole is another one that mm-hmm. like still like talks like that associates with Kodak Black and yeah. stuff like that from time to time. But the reason that he put him on there becomes very apparent when you're listening to Mother I Sober because towards the end of that he talks about how how many black men and kids were sexually abused by family members themselves and you know and that that's a cycle that continues and I think that's what he sees in Kodak Black. You know is is this kid that comes from trauma and breeds more trauma and how that's just this it's a generational never curse, bro. Yeah, the generational curse. And he even has his girl's vocals on here. He's got his kids speaking on here. Like I, Kendrick is a very private person when it comes to the internet. He's not on Twitter and Instagram like that. You know, he'll post when music is out, but that's about it. You know, he doesn't spend many, many days tweeting or, you know, posting shit about his family or anything. So, and even... I I, I kind of think that was apparent even when they dropped the album artwork that it was going to be a deeper dive into him because the artwork is obviously him, his girl, and his two kids um, in this room together. You know, he's got this crown of thorns on. And I think that's supposed to represent how um, we kind of put these celebrities and, and people like him on this pedestal um, as if they're like a Jesus-like figure. And he even says that in Savior. I'm not your savior. That's how he starts out the fucking um, verse. Or in the interlude before that, he said, J. Cole told you to do this, but he is not your savior. Kendrick told you to do this, but yep. he is not your savior. Future told you to do this. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I think he's just trying to bring us back down to reality a little bit with this project. But, um, you know, that's that's my thoughts on it after three listens. Um, is there anything else you want to say about it, E-Man? I know I'm going to talk about it more as the weeks go on. Yeah, I, I gotta, I'm got a... Like I said, three listens is not enough to di- really digest this. I'm really excited to see what comes from it because he announced a tour and everything like that. We gotta get to I do that. love that Trey Parker and Matt Stone had a lot to do with the video because there was a production. Like, I'm glad you pr- mentioned that production company. On top of that, uh, I think we talked about this before about the movie they got coming out too. Uh, who's so I don't I'm not familiar. I know his business partner is Dave Free. I'm not sure what is, who is Dave Free. Dave Free is his manager, one of his best friends from childhood, and also um, you know he has his hand in production and executive producing. And I know he's one of the label heads at um, or it was at TDE for a long time. And I, I know him and Kendrick do pretty much everything together. Like when I listened to that podcast that was all about to pimp a butterfly. Dave Free was one of the guy they guys they interviewed the most. You know, he's spent the most time with Kendrick. You know, touring with him and all of that, uh, all of the above. So that's like, um, I guess that would be Kendrick's right hand man, if you will. Okay, uh, I do plan on. I, I, like when we come back, I really want to talk about Sleepy Soldier a lot too. That was uh, the Tana Leone album. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I want to do a little bit deeper dive into that because I, I went through it on one listen. Uh, I really enjoy what I listen to, but. Yeah, so as so far it looks like the three artists that are mainly like associated with that are him, Baby Keem, as you said, because I looked that up now. That's been a deal for a while, and then Kendrick. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, as far as the album goes, though, dude, it's just it, it Kendrick Lamar is just so much better than everybody, and it's it's, it's just insane to me. And this is it's almost like kind of like sad because it's the end of era because it's his last album associated with Top Dog before mm-hmm. you know he does his own thing. Uh, it's just that, dude, I I I can't say enough about it. I definitely, I mean, like you, I stayed up till midnight to listen to this Hell album. Yeah. <laughs> I think I was just leaving because I want to go see Doctor Strange, so I like I just 
got out the movie and then they came out and I'm like, oh yeah, we're playing this shit. <laughs> United and Grief came on. That was when those pianos came in yep. in '95 with the mast up. Uh, I think I lost my shit at Father Time, and that's when that's what got me because it was just like that it, was deep, man. I mean, just hearing stuff like that and just me with I don't, I'm not gonna go into my personal life like that, but just the, certain issues and stuff like that. It's just like really, it just hit different. And Let's he couldn't have picked way. a better singer to get you in your emotional bag than Sampa on the fucking yeah, <laughs> feature, dude. Like yeah. uh, I've been waiting for new Sampa music for a minute because it's been a minute since he dropped. So like to see him as a feature on here really fucking made me happy. Um, yeah, like like E Man said, that song was definitely emotionally charged. It, 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 shit. it it's triggering, dog. I mean, a lot a lot of this album is, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, I I can't say enough good things about it. It's just weird that like not weird, but it's just like an artist like Kendrick to be at this level and it can touch on certain certain things still, and still cares about certain things like as like rapid like he never let that status thing kind of watered down his music, uh-huh. and that's fucking cool to me. Like, And you're talking about like kind of stepping away from the spotlight and protecting your energy, and then people like oh, that are influencer and are supposed to be like these people that care, or, you know, are for the people, but they're really for themselves. So he's like, I had to stay away from these, like, stuff like that. And it's just, I can't, dog, it's just... You just hit it, just hits home, dog. Yeah. Let's put it that way. And you just yeah. brought up a great point, too. And that's another thing that, like, actually, one of the things that I appreciate most about Kendrick is for as big as he is, he doesn't ever conform to what is popping on the radio at all. Like, he even made a statement in that podcast that I was listening to when he dropped Pimple Butterfly. He was like, I think I'm going to piss a lot of people off who are expecting a certain type of sound. Um, and Jay Z is the one that told him, well, do it now so your fans will never be able to box you in again. And that's exactly what he's carved out for yep. himself. You know what I mean? He can do whatever the fuck he wants. It's always going to be dope. It's always going to have so much thought in it. And um, that's, I mean, I made a, st- I made a bold statement on my um, Instagram story after like my second or third listen where it's, it's transcended rap music to me now because I've always had this like inner uh, argument with myself uh, for my number one spot, and it's usually depending on who I've listened to most recently between Biggie and Andre 3000. And Kendrick has floated around my top five for like the last 10 years, but I just never really know where I put him. He's easily now in that um, that tie for first place with me, with Andre, Biggie, and him. And he's even done more than these guys have now too, you know. Like he's – this is – if you count – Oh, man. If you count – um. What was the what was after overly dedicated? Uh, section eighty. Section eighty. If you count section eighty, this is six in a row. If you don't count section eighty, this is five in a row, which is still rarefied air. I think only Kanye has five classics that are in a row. Um, so does, does in a row. What? Kanye has five classics in a row. For sure. In a row. Yeah, from from uh, from college dropout all the way to uh, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Late registration, graduation. What was four? 808s. 808s. Okay. My beautiful Dark Twisted Okay, yeah, I I, I co-sign that. All right, I just want to make sure. Like, Wait, when was Jesus? Because I'm like, eh. Actually, no, (laughs) you know, I would even put Jesus as six. Yeah. He fell off for me. I don't think it's a bona fide classic, though. It did. You know why it is? Because of the production style. Production's crazy. The production style kind of set the tone of it. Yeah. Because he had, like, Daft Punk on the production, which he did for Stronger yeah. and stuff like that, too. But that, we're not talking about Kanye right now. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, <laughs> what was I about? It was a point you made that I but wanted to. No, I was, was going to say, he's up there with Stevie now. He's transcended rap for me. He's what with was Stevie. The point? Damn it, Neil. You said something I really wanted to touch on. And whoa. Oh, yeah. Got it. All right. So when we talk <laughs> about the big three, right? When we talk about Drake, Kendrick, and Cole and stuff like that, my biggest gripe with Kendrick for me was who have you put on? Uh-huh. And, and like that thing, because I think about like Drake. You know, Drake had the weekend. Drake has like he a puts a million fucking motherfuckers on. on. Like <laughs> if you do a Drake feature, you know it's yeah. gonna go fucking crazy. Yep. Cole has Dreamville. I mean, you got JID, you got Boss, you got like all these people and stuff like that that come out of it. Who has Kendrick actually put on? Right. But then up until like you know Baby Keem, obviously mm-hmm. that just came out recently, and then what? I can't wait to see what Tana Leone does and stuff like that soon. But that was always my big thing, so I'm really happy to see where PG Lang goes, like five, yeah. ten, you know, whatever years from now. So that, because that was always my big thing, and like the big three when I placed those big three of like that's a good our point. generation. I always one thing people, I mean, outside of talent, outside of sales, outside of all that, 
who have you actually put to in a place to put at be at your level? Mm-hmm. Drake will be the front runner of that out of yeah. the three for sure. But I mean, we'll, we see. We'll see what Keem does. Keem that's has that's a Grammy, like stuff like that. He's fucking hot right now. He's killing it. That's an interesting yeah. perspective yeah. you just brought up, actually, though, because like I kind of always looked at um, TDE and Dreamville kind of like um, peers. Uh, of a label, but you make a lot of sense there, and I never really thought about it. TDE technically wasn't Kendrick's, that was and Dreamville on. is yeah. J. Cole's. Yeah, exactly. So that, now that was the big thing for me for a long time with Kendrick. You know what? That you made me think there. That's a, that's a good point. That's a really good point. Um, and yeah, and I guess this will uh, be to prove how good he is at that with PG Lang. You're right. That's really cool. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, what else was I about to say about that? Um. Yeah, man. I just, I'm just excited that it's out. I'm excited that I have this shit to listen to forever. Um, I'm excited that um, Westside Boogie got a look on here. He wrote the uh, part, or he co-wrote Summer Walker's verse. Didn't um, Westside Boogie like grow up not too far from Kendrick too? Yeah, they're like they literally dude, are neighborhood can we, friends. Can we count him as well? <laughs> like I don't know. <laughs> they're literally neighborhood friends. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. Um, we, uh, in the same vein of people that put other people on i think unquestionably well at least in hip-hop i think the front runner of that is definitely dr dre as far as what people that, that someone that's put, put all these fucking because look about you think about it dre put on mm. all of the dudes from nwa he put on fucking snoop dogg which has had a career that's insanity. In, <laughs> he in put on different Eminem. generations too. Oh, multiple generations. Anderson he put Pac. On Anderson Pog. He put on Snoop Dogg. He put on G Unit. So Fifty Cent, Eminem, fucking Kendrick, because Kendrick was on was really popping off uh, that Compton album and on the Recipe. And every time I think <laughs> about this, it makes me sad that John Connor never got his due. I know. I, it makes me, every time I think about that, I'm just like, ah. That's the only one. Because I know there was a tweet I had circa 2012 that I said, John Connor's going to be bigger than Kendrick one day. Y'all watch. or some sh- It was like some shit like that. And I was wrong. I mean, you can definitely I think hear. That was, I think when we talked about bad takes, that was like the bad take that I had. But, I but you're not but, completely wrong no, but, in that, But though. I fucking still love John Connor's music. And so you're not like, completely yeah. wrong in that because I think John Connor was a huge early inspiration to Kendrick. Whether Kendrick ever says that on record or not, if you listen to early Kendrick and then you listen to John Connor, like he is taking some of John Connor's style a little bit, especially in the beginning. Like he almost has a similar vocal inflection to John Connor, too. Um, and I'm pretty sure John Connor's probably still eating. I think he's, he wrote a lot of fucking shit for Dre. Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> a lot, a lot, he probably wrote for a lot of people. Though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he'll be all right. Yeah, I think he'll be okay. Um, I still I actually follow John Connor. Like, oh, he, I do uh, too. Yeah, I think he put out some kind of recent he put out a mixtape in the like in the beginning of the pandemic and then i know he was talking about like a full-length project i hope he still does it shout out to john Connor. shout out flint shout out flint for sure another artist that we need to get to next week um because i keep fucking forgetting and i finally listened to it and it's some of the cooler production i've heard out of him in a while is the asher roth heather gray project um i know you still need to sit with it a little bit i haven't so even I touched even... it yet it's dude it's, like... it's pretty cool production man um and then yeah, we didn't even talk about like the Jack Harlow album and shit. So I guess we can save some of those the popular ones. For I, next I week. just know that he, he's save, on tour save, with the have, City Girls. Ha, ha, should we have, uh, <laughs> should, we have <laughs> should we have White Boy Rap Hour next week? <laughs> Jack Harlow, Asher Roth, White Boy Rap Hour. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to name that episode White Boy Rap Hour if we do that. Okay. So I also I had a because I I got a potentially bad take about the Jack Harlow album because oh, I mean, yeah. a lot of people were comparing Jack Harlow to Mac Miller and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think I told you that. And you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go, I'm <laughs> go, I'm go into it real quick. <laughs> go for it, man. So I think there is a parallel there. I don't think Jack Harlow is nearly as good, obviously, but like I think there is a parallel there. Jack Harlow is in this place right now He where he could go – he could stay in the super pop route or he's going to do something really out of the box and weird very soon. And this is why this is, and this is where my Mac Miller comparison comes in. Cause he's at the blue slide park of his career right now. Mm-hmm. I would say, cause it's like, he's that guy. Or the like, Asher, the asleep in the bread aisle. I th- oh, he's past. <laughs> I think he's past that. Yeah. I bigger, think he's past that. Yeah, but, right. uh, I, I do think he's at that point where he could 
keep going in the direction he is because he he could honestly hit Drake level as far as mm-hmm. like where he's gonna be like that top tier guy and stuff like that. Or he's gonna go in a really fucking weird direction where it's just like really experimental and stuff like that. I don't see that happening right now, but I'm really curious to see what Jack Harlow does five years from now. I, I'm dude, I'm I with really you. That's a great. Am. That's another great fucking take by you. Um, I, I I agree with you there because I have this burn. So it happens to all of us, especially in the music lover community, that once that thing that you were on early blows up and gets popular, you kind of get that little bit of hate that starts to build in your stomach. <laughs> you know what I mean? Call it the Drake effect. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're effect. like, that was my special thing. Now all these fucking people know about it, and it's not cool to me anymore. Um, that's always going to happen, and it is a little bit, it is hate. But You know what? But... The only person, I'm trying to think who's that happened to me to. I, I actually always consistently like Drake, so that's not it. Yeah. I think MGK was like that for oh, me, for, big it's, time. It's happened to me with a ton I of people that. over the years, but... And I've definitely felt that, and I've almost, like, posted about it, but have refrained. But, like, I am getting a little annoyed with Jack Harlow. I'm getting annoyed with seeing him more than the music. Like, I'm, just, I'm tired of seeing, like, the clips of him running around with Drake being a weirdo everywhere. It's almost how and... I feel about Lizzo. <laughs> like, I love your music, but it's just, like, you are everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> right it, is, it, is, it just gets annoying a little bit. And then another That's thing not that a you shot, and... by the way. I, I no. just cannot wait for her fucking album. But... For sure. I'm with you on that. <laughs> and then another thing that you and I talked about. So... I got onto Jack Harlow early um, because I'm an obsessive fan of Sway's universe, and I'm always watching the freestyle videos on Sway. Shout out to Sway. He's one of the legends in the shit that we do. Um, so, yeah, I, I always watch him, and there's always you always get to see these artists when they're f- brand new coming up. That's one thing that I love about Sway. He'll always give someone an opportunity early. Um, and so DJ Drama, which DJ Drama's track record, man, if we're counting – Jesus Christ, this man. Um, drama brought him up, just like he brought up Justin Bieber, and now he's running with Tyler and all this shit, dude. Drama has been man. Did it again. We we might have to have it. We might have to have a whole DJ drama episode. You you you, you, you did Tyler, it yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, Tyler, Eminem, Mac Miller. <laughs> Let's get just, it out just, right now. Just get the trifecta <laughs> out the way. Um, but yeah, so drama brought him up. And part of the allure to me with Jack Early is he's this white boy that looked so insanely nerdy. He had this, like, semi-long... Kind of like Napoleon Dynamite. He kind of did. He had this, like, semi-long curly hair, the dorky thick frame glasses. You know, he didn't dress very impressive. But he had this, like, innate swagger about the way that he rapped. Like, and I don't like that word very much, but for lack of a better term, that's what it was. Aesthetic. You know, like... He did. He had a great aesthetic about him, and he was, like, very confident for this nerdy-ass kid. And I think that was part of the allure with his first two albums, that, like, this kid looks this way, but he sounds so fucking cool. But now he's, like, he's so popular that now they're kind of changing his look. You know, they've got him, you know... He's got the beard growing in. They've taken the hair back oh, a little yeah. bit. Oh, yeah. Got Atlantic, rid of the Atlantic, glasses. Atlantic is in an image consultant is all over that shit. <laughs> yeah. you know? So now it's kind of losing. too much money invested you know, in It's, it's kind of losing its like, um, allure to me a little bit. But I do got to say, Pitchfork, they did him dirty, man. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking did him super dirty. They gave him like oh, a 2.9. Pitchfork. Maybe we should save that talk for next week since yeah. we're already fucking running along. We'll get into Jack Harlow. And uh, some of the other releases, because there was other shit, too, that I want to get to. Um, I didn't care much for the Black Keys album. I did listen to that. Um, and it's not bad music. The way I feel about the Black Keys now is just, like, they become, like, such a generic blues rock band to me. Like, none of the shit is, like, very, like, pushing creativity for them. Um, I think they peaked out at um, Attack and Release in 2011. The ASAP Rocky single is great, that DMB, by the way. I still haven't listened. Is that it's, the one with Rihanna on the video and shit? Yes. Okay, yeah, I, haven't, I haven't listened to that yet, but I'm that, excited for the Rocky. The Logic Rust track is great. I didn't hear that either. Logic Rust dropped a track. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, Therapy Music. They it's probably actually, it's they actually probably really great. solid. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm excited to hear that one, actually. Uh, Red Balloon. Dude, is that what it is? <laughs> Oh my god, I have to mention that before uh, we go. So we've been making jokes about how the fact that Tank and the Bangas, this band out of New Orleans, had a similar or a, the same aesthetic as what E Man was doing with the Green Balloons concept. And I just I had texted E Man the other day because I was looking through the new albums and they dropped a new album called Red Balloon. And I'm I was really like, curious to see what the this torment is about. of E Man's mind continues. <laughs> <laughs> um. But with that being said, I'm they gonna, don't make music that sounds anything like E-Man. Absolutely so there's that. not. That's the thing. Like, I actually enjoy their music. It was just, I was like, 
that shit came out. I'm like, what the fuck? And they won a Grammy for it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they did. They did fucking win a Grammy. That's right. They added insult to injury. I'm like, all right. <laughs> oh, man.